The most fundamental change to the new A-levels involves the decoupling of AS levels and A-levels. This will present its own challenges when designing schemes of work. What will be interesting to see is how different colleges and schools approach this change. Many are still intending to enter students for AS levels as they feel that this is what universities want to see. It also allows teachers to have a measure of students' progress and to be able to see how they're getting on. However, there are financial implications to this decision and it remains to be seen how motivated students will be when taking an AS level, which ultimately won't count for anything if they continue to full A level. Alongside some new content, mostly the addition of more contemporary research, the major changes are to research methods with the inclusion of peer review, referencing and the way to structure a research project, all vital skills for degree level study. There are also some changes to the way students are assessed. The major change is application. Students will now be expected to apply their knowledge to novel scenarios. And of course, this will have implications for the way we teach students and how we teach them to approach assessment. The major change in the new specifications are the new mathematical requirements. Within A-level psychology, 10% of the assessment must be level two or higher maths. This is basically GCSE level. Lower level maths might still be assessed, but they won't count towards the 10%. These new mathematical requirements refer to all of the specifications in England and can be found in the Ofqual document. This document needs to be read in conjunction with the A-level specification that you are following. The rationale behind the inclusion of more math skills at A-level psychology is in response to a criticism from higher education. It has been said that science students in general, not just psychology students, are not well prepared in terms of math skills, especially stats. Hopefully, this new requirement will go some way to address this. What can we do to support both ourselves and our students? Remember, some of the content will have been covered at GCSE, but it might not necessarily have been given the same name. For example, students will have covered mean, median and mode, but they won't have referred to them as measures of central tendency as we do in psychology. We need to change mindsets, not only our students, but our own too. We need to make I can't become I can. My own opinion is that we have a bit of a cultural issue in the UK with maths. Whilst people go to great lengths to hide illiteracy, people seem to have no problem saying I can't do maths, I'm rubbish at maths, I'm really bad at maths. And it is that mindset that we need to change. The challenge for us teachers is to make maths relevant to psychology, unthreatening, meaningful and active. If we can do that, our students will have far less of a problem with mathematics.